How's it going, boys? Johnny Superb Man here, bringing you another Questions with Superb Man. And you know what? We got a bunch of great questions this time. We have a few that I can talk a few minutes about, and we also have a few quick questions. So we'll get the quick questions out of the way first. The first question comes to us from Jackstrap74, and he wants to know, what do I think about the Alexander Radulov story? All right, for anyone who doesn't know, the uh, Nashville Predators reacquired, I guess you could say, Alexander Radulov. Now this guy, they drafted in the 2004 NHL entry draft, 15th overall. I mean, he went in the first round. He was supposed to be something special for them. But he only played two seasons. Uh, in the 2006-2007 season, he had 37 points in 64 games. Not a bad rookie season. And then the next season, 58 points in 81 games. So, I mean, he's a great little player. But then after that, he, uh, he left the Nashville Predators. He opted out of his contract, didn't want to play there anymore. So he went over to Russia to play in the KHL. Now that his season, that his uh, KHL team was eliminated, well, he's coming back. He wants to come back to the Nashville Predators. Now, I do have a problem with this. Um, I see why Nashville's doing it. I mean, they're obviously gearing up for a strong playoff run. They want every every little bit of help that they can get. They want to hold on to Sutter and Weber, so they're trying to prove to them that they're a good team. But I don't like that. I don't like the fact that you're accepting back someone who wanted to leave in the first place. Like, if this guy was just an average hockey player, would they accept him back? I don't think so. He's got some superstar status around him. You know, he's got an aura around him. So, obviously, they're going to want him back. Um, I don't like it. Uh, he played his first game tonight in the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, they just they destroyed him 5-1, but he did get a goal. So, it, it should be interesting. The, the question is, I think, are the Nashville Predators going to be better with Alexander Radulov in the lineup. And you know what? We're going to have to wait and see for that, but I don't like it, all right? Uh, Jack Strap, I don't like it. I don't like the fact that he can just leave and come back right in the playoffs, you know, whenever he wants. Uh, I, I like the team first. There was, there was players on Nashville who have been playing there the whole season, and now somebody's got to take a backseat to this guy who didn't do anything for the team, who left back when... Uh, the team wasn't as good as they are right now, you know, and all of a sudden Nashville's looking like a good team. He wants to come back. I don't like it, all right? So thank you for that, Jackstrap74. Um, the next question comes from some, comes to us from San Jose Sharks fan, Fanzoli, I don't know what the hell that name is. And he wants to know, what do I think about the San Jose Sharks this year? And you know what? I got this question in a bunch of different forms. And it, it's, it's, it's weird to say because... You know, when you think of the San Jose Sharks for the longest time now, they've they've been one of those teams you can always expect them to be up there in the top four or top five. You know, they're always a team that's going to go. They're going to choke eventually in the playoffs, you know, but they're going to have a good playoff run. They're a team that you got to watch out for, basically. But this year, they're in 10th. I mean, and they, they, it's weird. I'm looking at their record right now. You know, they got eight more games to play. They're 37, 27, and 10. I mean, they're, they're 10 games above 500, but they have a lot of overtime losses. And overtime losses, yeah, they still get you points, but the Western Conference, it's very tight this year. All the points seem to be in the Western Conference. They sit in 10th place. Now, if they got eight games left, I mean, if they can get to 40 wins, that's 90 points right there. So I think if they can win, you know, five or six of those last games, end up with, what will that get them? Hang on a sec. Let me do a little math here. Yeah, if they win five more games, they'll end up with 94 points. So, I mean, that normally should get you into the playoffs. They're going to need at least at least five games. They're going to need probably six games to make it for sure. So, I don't know. The San Jose Sharks, maybe they're getting old. I mean, they remember, the beginning of the season, they traded away Setaguchi and Heatley for uh, Havlat and, uh, what was it, uh, Brett Burns. Now, I don't know what Havlat's been doing this year. I didn't check his stats. But, you know what, that might be the reason. They traded away two of their young guns. Uh, Setaguchi's fairly young. Obviously, Heatley's not the youngest, but he was still a good player, right? They opted for better defense and Brett Burns, but I don't know if that helped them out at all. They're only a plus nine in goal differential, so they might have lost a little bit of scoring touch with that trade. But I don't know, it's, it might be that time, you know, Patrick Marlowe, uh, Joe Thornton, they're gonna get, they're getting old, you know, they don't have Nabokov anymore. I know Niemi won the Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks, but is he as good as Nabokov? I don't know. It's hard to say. It might just be that the San Jose Sharks boys are getting old. You know, Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, those guys are the one-two punch. And if they start to go downhill, uh, I don't watch them enough. It's hard for me to give my opinion. But if they make it into the playoffs, I still think you got to watch out for the San Jose Sharks. I don't know. San Jose Sharks fans, what do you think? Are you guys just getting old now? Or are you just... Are you, uh, 
Are you, uh, uh, like, are you guys suffering from the loss of Heatley? How has Havlat been doing this year? I, I don't get to watch these guys enough, but it's sad to see. But I still think that if the San Jose Sharks make it into the playoffs, they will be a team to be forced to be reckoned with, all right? I mean, Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe, they're still good, all right? So there you go, San Jose Sharks fan. Uh, I don't really have that much of an opinion. It's hard for me to judge other teams that I don't get to watch. Stats are one thing, you know. Um, but let me know, San Jose Sharks fan, what's going on with the uh, San Jose Sharks this year? The third question comes for us from Blackhawks fan XXXX. A bunch of X's in that name. Ooh, who do I think will be the MVP of this season? Well, I got one answer. It's not even a debate for me. It's going to be Geno Malkin, all right? The guy's leading the NHL in points. He did it all year without Crosby. All right, I think it's his year to take home the MVP of the season, all right? It's not even a toss-up for me. I, if I had to decide who's going to win the MVP of the season, I'd give it to Geno. Absolutely. All right, so thank you for that question. Um, now, here's the next two questions I can talk a few minutes about. First one, what is my opinion? This comes to us from PS3 Ice Dude 14. What is my opinion about uh, fighting in hockey? Well, fighting definitely needs to stay in hockey, all right? People love it. I agree that, uh, you know, people can get hurt by it, but nobody forces anyone to fight. Nobody forces anyone to fight. If you don't want to fight, don't go running around, you know, running your mouth, up, uh, running your mouth off, chirping everybody, cheap-shotting the star players on the team. Just... Focus on your own game, you know, and you won't have to fight. There's plenty of players in the league, such as, I'll tell you, like Grabowski, uh, Phil Kessel, all right? Uh, these guys, they don't fight. They don't have to fight. So it's not like players are forced into this and then they're forced into injuries, all right? These guys are adults. They're getting paid millions of dollars a year. They know what they're getting themselves into, all right? I don't think that it's right for reporters or ex-players to come back and say, oh, fighting should be out of the game. I think you should leave it up to the general managers, the coaches, and the players to decide this kind of, uh, this kind of topic because fighting is a part of hockey. And you know what? I kind of agree with Brian Burke with there's too many rats running around now. Um, I'm not going to name names, all right? But there's too many. Sean Avery, all right? I don't mind naming Sean Avery. Um, the stupid instigator rule where you're not allowed to go start in a fight with people because you'll get a, I forget what the, uh, the actual, I think it's a game ejection as well. I, like it, the instigator rule is absolutely ridiculous because you got players like Sean Avery running around, you know, wanting to fight little superstars. But as soon as the tough guy comes out, wants to drop the gloves, he turns away, looks at the referee. Oh, please help me. Help me. Help me. If you didn't have the instigator rule, you could have, you know, George Peros jump over the boards, grab Avery, and just boom, boom, boom. Smarten up, you dumbass. Good, good old, old school hockey, right? You take a lot of that stupid little chirping out of the game. If you want to go around again, if you want to go around chirping people, you want to go around taking cheap shots, fine. But you better be able to back it up. That's my one thing. So I definitely think fighting should stay in hockey. The, um... The stage fights, I could get away with. Uh, I wouldn't mind if they took that out. If you guys didn't see it, look up, uh, search on YouTube, the Devils versus the Rangers uh, brawl. Right off the beginning face-off. I mean, right off the beginning face-off. They had a defenseman taking the face-off because they knew it was going to happen. The left wing, the right wing, and the center of both teams all brawl. Three players going at it right at the beginning. I don't think that should be in hockey, all right? We don't need stage fighting, but... If players are acting stupid out there and the other team has a tough guy or somebody who wants to fight and stick up for his team, I think he should be able to go out there and just pummel the other guy, all right? It, it, like, again, you don't have to fight. You just have to know the rules. Don't go around acting like a jackass and you won't get your ass beat. It's as simple as that, all right? So that's my thoughts on fighting and hockey. Thank you very much, PS3 Ice Dude 14 And here's the last question. Oh, my goodness gracious. This one's a great one. Uh, this comes to us from Who's a Fi One Two Three. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, do you think that Brian Burke should be fired after this season? Whoa. Okay. 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 So this is a question I can really uh, I know a lot about. I'm a Leaf fan. Now, thing about Brian Burke. Okay. So I think that he's made some great trades for the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right. But he's also made some horrible trades. Horrible trades by his own standard. Now I'll tell you why. If you go back. When the Okay, Phil Kessel, right? I love Phil Kessel. He's a great player. But the more and more that we have bad and worse seasons, the more and more it looks like that trade was not worth it. Now, I'm not saying I don't love Phil Kessel. I do. But here's the thing. When Brian Burke made that trade, he said, he said to everybody, he said to the media, you know, 
Um, yeah, it was a steep price, two firsts and a second, but with the addition of Phil Kessel, you know, I'm not expecting our team to finish at the bottom of the table, so those first round picks won't be as good as you guys are thinking them, as you guys are thinking that they will be. Well, guess what, Brian Burke, the first year after we got Kessel, our draft pick went second overall. So right there, right there, by his own standard, all right, he thought the team was going to, you know, be top 15 or whatever. Well, guess what, we were 29th, all right, so right there. He went against his own uh, reasoning for that trade. All right, all right, all right. So that's one of the drafts. We don't get Tyler Sagan, all right? Tyler Sagan for Phil Kessel straight up. You know, you can argue who's better. If straight up, Tyler Sagan and Phil Kessel is not a bad trade. But then you add in the extra first round pick. Now, I know Brian Burke was hoping that the second year, it, we definitely wouldn't be at the bottom of the table, right? But guess what? The second year, last year, we finished, what was it? Uh, I forget what our draft pick was, but Boston, they got Dougie Hamilton. It was a top 10 pick, all right? Now, could you imagine if we didn't have Phil Kessel last year? We would have finished even worse. So if we didn't take Phil Kessel, we would have had the first or second pick in the first year, and then maybe a top five pick in the second year, all right? So we could have gotten like Tyler Sagan and then maybe Adam Larson. All right, or Gabriel Landeskog, or someone like that. So Brian Burke saying that we traded those two first round picks, not expecting them to be anything special. Well, guess what, Brian Burke, you were wrong because those two those two picks were both. The first one was top three, the second one was top ten. All right, and now we come back to the third year. All right, this year now. Imagine, I mean, we're at the bottom of the table. We're, we're in the lottery for the first overall pick right now. Now imagine if we didn't have Phil Kessel. All right. We wouldn't have been a good team again this year. But what does that mean? We would be, for sure, we would have gotten another top five pick. So if we didn't trade for Phil Kessel in that year, we would have possibly gotten Tyler Sagan in the first year, you know, Gabriel Langdeskog or Adam Larson, like I said, in the second year. And now this year, we could have gotten, you know, Nail Yakupov, uh, Ryan Murray, any of the young prospects that are up this year. So by Brian Burke saying that, you know, we traded Phil Kessel, expecting us to be a good team this year, Right there, he's gone against his own reasoning. He's gone against his own thinking. And what? I mean, we're going in. This is his third year. And once again, we're not in the playoffs. And if he didn't make that, again, I love Phil Kessel, all right? But if we didn't make that Phil Kessel trade, we'd have three young studs. Three young studs, all right? You know what? I hated how Brian Burke said that when he first joined. He said it on the hour with George Strombolopoulos. He's like, I hate when uh, GMs say that we don't need a five-year, or we need a five-year rebuild. You know, it's just an excuse for the team to lose for five years straight, for the GM not to have any pressure. Well, guess what, Brian? All right? You, we, maybe we needed the five-year rebuild, all right? Because you have not taken the Toronto Maple Leafs to the Stanley Cup playoffs since you've been here, all right? You've made trades left and right. The Lupo Gardner trade, excellent. The Dion Phaneuf trade was great, all right? We didn't need those players. You've made some great ones. But the biggest trade, the Phil Kessel trade, absolutely horrible again i love phil kessel but by his own standard he failed on that trade all right so that's my thoughts about brian burke do i think he should be fired uh that's hard to say that's hard to say i think he was a better gm than fletcher i think he was a better gm than john ferguson jr all right i think he was a better gm than pat quinn pat quinn just got all older guys all right we're still suffering from those gms uh from their decisions not to go with the draft and brian burke not wanting to go for a five-year rebuild when we desperately needed it, all right? And also, him saying on the camera in the, uh, remember when T John Tavares went first overall? He said to everybody, hey, we could have gotten John Tavares, but we would have had to trade Luke Shen and Nazim Kadri or something along those lines. Well, you know what? You're looking kind of stupid now because I would trade Luke Shen and Nazim Kadri for John Tavares like that, all right? So... When he says things to the camera, and then two or three, four years later, you go back, you look at it, and you say, wow, he was wrong. Yeah, you do have the grounds to maybe fire him, but do I think he should be fired? Uh, I, I don't think he should. I think I think he has a lot of pressure on him right now. I want to see what he does, um, but I don't think he should be fired. I think he should be given you know, one more year, all right? I, I, think, I think he should be given up to, uh, sorry, two more years. Uh, Phil Kessel and Dion Phaneuf still have two more years after that. They were brought in during the um, Brian Burke era. I think they should go up to their last year, and if we're still not a good team, I want to see what he does. I mean, I can see Phil Kessel and Dion Phaneuf getting traded in the next two years, boys. I know it's crazy, but I do. Now, I've kind of rambled on a lot about this Brian Burke 
uh, question, but no, I don't think he should be fired after this season, basically because I don't think there's anyone else who can come in and do a better job right now. All right, that's that's it. I think he should be given one more chance. He's had some good trades. That Phil Kessel trade was horrible, absolutely, but I think he should be given at least to the end of Phil and uh, Dion Phaneuf's contract. See what see what he's going to do with them, all right? Because... Uh, whatever, whatever. I've been rambling too long. So let me know, boys. Let me know your questions for the next GM mode. Oh, GM mode. Jesus. Let me know your questions for the next questions with Superb Man. All right. So for Johnny Superb Man and the Great Domsky, take it easy, boys, and we'll see you next time.